Well, do you or someone you care about suffer from chronic sinus troubles? If you've had enough, then you're going to want to hear about a solution. Dr. Mothin Kandula is a board-certified ear, nose, and throat specialist. Great to see you this morning. Great to and be I back. think it's good timing yeah. this time of year. It's coming to yeah. be talking about chronic sinus problems yeah. because I think for a lot of people it peaks probably in fall and winter, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's usually that. That's kind of the prime time. So yeah. How do you know if? I mean, this might sound obvious, but how do you know if it's a chronic? problem or a chronic condition that you maybe need to have looked at? It's it's hard to know. I mean, so it sounds like a, such a simple problem. I mean, we've talked about this, that it gets sort of dismissed. And even if you bring it up to your doctor, a lot of times they'll say, oh, try this spray, try this pill, just deal with it. And um, so it, get, it, it gets dismissed often, but a lot of folks suffer and they suffer chronically. And they don't know that there's necessarily, that there are options and that and there are. And so, you know, a lot of times for folks who truly have chronic sinus issues, pretty much all the time is when he truly has a chronic sinus infection or blockage, medications aren't going to really do the aren't going to be the answer. And maybe that's the key too, is if you tried medication and mm -hmm. you're still suffering, you might need to see someone. In the past, um, what kinds of things were done to, to mm -hmm. help people other than medication maybe? Yeah, I mean, typically if so, so if somebody had, you know, significant sinus issues and had, you know, trouble and wanted something done, it was really one option, which was surgery, which is still a good option for many folks. But a lot of folks, you know, especially because it's a quality of life issue, a lot of folks said, yeah, it's, it's an issue, but it's not that significant. I'm just mm -hmm. going to keep dealing with it. You know, nowadays we've got some some in between options that are really a great fit for a lot of folks. Well, let's talk about some of those options because I think traditional methods. A lot of times people spent there was a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. People spent a lot of time healing and then maybe didn't always get the relief they they expected. One of the procedures that you've pioneered is this balloon sinuplasty, and we have video of it so that you can describe it. Sure. Um, you, you use this here in our state to treat chronic problems, like we talked about. Why is this effective? What do you like about this procedure? <laughs> It really gets to the core of the problem. So a lot of folks who have trouble with their, with sinus issues, they're basically the main issue is plumbing. So if your plumbing isn't working, your sinuses can't drain. And this, mm -hmm. this is sort of an example of this. This is looking at somebody's face, looking up in the sinus cavities. And literally, it's getting directly into the sinus opening and just dilating that opening. So with traditional techniques, we had to remove tissue in order to open up the sinus openings. With balloon sinuplasty, we're basically finding the natural opening with a lighted wire. Once we find the right spot, we're just putting a balloon in over that wire, and then we're inflating it, which sounds you know relatively simple, and it is. And so because we've not removed any tissue or done anything that way, it's a lot easier to do and have done, and it's a lot easier from a recovery standpoint. And people don't even need to go to the hospital for no, this? No, no. We used to. When we first introduced this, this is something that we in conjunction with surgery uh, with somebody asleep. Nowadays, you know, nine out of ten folks that we're doing this for, uh, we do it just in the office under local anesthesia. And are people generally, I mean, because you can tell that wire is so thin, are people generally able to resume regular activities fairly quickly? Yeah, yeah. Typically, I recommend folks, you know, but that the rest of that day just sort of doing what they, whatever they feel like, but not having anything planned. By the next day, back to school, back to work, really no significant downtime. That's amazing, especially yeah. when you compare it to traditional methods of, of trying to treat this. Um, um, what about um, people with these these chronic problems? Do you find that that soon after it, it, it tends to be a permanent yeah. solution, yeah. something that lasts? Uh, yeah, that's the number one question I get is, well, does this last? It's a balloon. How can it how can it last? It does last. So it's about, you know typically about 95% of folks who have this done, those sinus openings that we opened up, stay open a year, two, three, four, five years down the road. That's amazing. So, yeah. The one thing people though need to do in order to take advantage of this simple procedure is to be evaluated, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. I think that's the key is starting there yep. because you can tell them if. They're this is something if they'd be a good candidate for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not magic. It, it's one procedure that we can do. We can do it in a simple fashion in the office. A lot of folks, like I said, are, are sort of scared or, or have sought out help and don't know what to do. You know, if you don't know what to do, if you're suffering with issues, if you, if you know somebody who is, you know, just get in and get it checked out. We can figure out if there's some good answers for you. So this is one method that you really like. Mm -hmm. Are there other ways you can help people if you don't feel like they're a good candidate for the balloon yeah, sinuplasty? Absolutely. There's, there are other in-office procedures that can help. You know, one in particular helps with breathing. Big time and if somebody's not a candidate for the in-office stuff and they've had have issues and they've got issues that show up on on their x-rays then sometimes still the traditional surgery might be the best fit for somebody and, and we can certainly do all of those things what about what's happening next week on Tuesday because mm -hmm. this is a free seminar an yep. opportunity for people to meet you ask questions sure. um, and, and hear more about all the different procedures and options for yeah, them absolutely so basically we'll kind of run through what you know what sinus disease is what our options are including you know obviously focusing on balloon sinuplasty but yeah and, and we've done 
done this a few times and it's great. And we get a lot of folks out, a lot of folks have good questions and, and questions that they've been wondering about that other folks may be wondering but didn't know to ask. And it's not as formal as coming in for an appointment, that kind of thing. So there's really no, there's no barrier involved. It's coming in, you know, just hanging out and, and hopefully getting some good information. And it's free. And I bet a lot of the questions people have is, does insurance cover this? Mm -hmm. And very often it does, yeah, right? Yeah, almost always it does. Almost yes. always. So here's the information for the free seminar that we were just talking about. It's happening next week, Tuesday, September 23rd at 6 p.m. It's a seminar at the Sinus Center, or excuse me, um, with the Sinus Center. It's happening at the Crown Plaza Hotel and Conference Center, which is at Highway 100 and Watertown Plank. The phone number for more information and to reserve a seat is 414-771-6780, or you can visit them online at advent.md, or you can go to slash event forum to find out more about that particular seminar again happening next week tuesday the 23rd the sinus center at advent advanced ear nose and throat specialists thank you so much appreciate your time thanks for thanks for having me absolutely